Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, SSC Live TV studio with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining us as we continue to dig into this important theme on violence, violence. And I hope that maybe you can take some of these powerful points to ponder this week and get into a discussion group with other people and discuss these issues and come up, we know the, the causes, and all together we can come up with some cures. Yesterday we discovered uh, that, the, that there's a spiral of violence, or that violence that has engulfed our community, the black community, is the consequences of public policy. Public policy simply determines who gets what. Who gets what? That's what public policy is all about. It's about what community gets blessed and what com community gets blasted. Historically, the black community is a community that has been disinvested in. We get blasted. We, we don't get uh, monetization. We get ghettoization. We don't get the surplus. We get the sur minus. So when you have public policy that leaves certain communities behind, public policy leaving them behind, that creates private policies, or how I'm thinking, where you become bewildered. When you become bewildered and you don't think you have options, it's what causes people to age in activities that lead to violence and to lead to crime. Now, there's two types of private policies, which is nothing but attitudes that people can have. Because before there can be violence, there has to be the violent mindset, the violent attitude. If you could understand the attitude of a person who's engaging in violence that kills people, then this is what you would see. For example, the nonviolent attitude says this. If I have a nonviolent attitude, I'm saying all life is precious, so I have to, have to treat life as sacred. The, non, the violent attitude is an attitude that says, nobody gave me a chance, so life must not be sacred because nobody gave me a chance. And guess what? That's probably true. That is probably true. Now, we might say we live in an equal e society where everybody gets a chance. It's a chance. That's a lie. It's a myth. Some people are positioned with more chances and more opportunities than others. There are high opportunity communities and there are low to no opportunity communities. And where the violence is taking place in black communities are communities that have, are no to low opportunity communities that have been engineered that way. So the person who sees public policy that has put them behind has a bewildered attitude that says, nobody gave me a chance. When you have a nonviolent attitude and you don't commit violence, it's because in your mind, in your personal policy and thinking, you're saying, well, my hard work will be rewarded. But when you live in distressed neighborhoods where you don't have opportunities, uh, you, you say to yourself, well, since nobody's giving me an opportunity, I got to take what I want. And when you have a whole lot of people in the community with that same attitude, I got to take what I want because nobody's giving me anything. No one gives me an opportunity. There's not justice and equity. That's the violent attitude. The nonviolent attitude says, the future depends on what I do today. So I'm going to do everything right today because I got a future. But there are people who are put in situations who say to themselves, because it's true, I don't have a future. And if there's really a God, preacher Kevin, if there's really a God who is good, why do black people have it so bad? And that's a good question. That's a legitimate question question. Those with a nonviolent attitude who are hopeful and going after it, and they say to themselves, the future depends on what I do today. And those with a violent attitude says, what I do today doesn't matter. What I do today doesn't matter. Those with a nonviolent attitude are those who say, well, race doesn't hold you back. Well, it might not hold you back, but it does hold people back. Racism is real. So since racism and low opportunities and no opportunities is real and people don't know how to climb up and don't have the ladders to climb up, then they get into a survival mode and they say, I got to do whatever I have to do to survive. 
And that's what James says in James chapter 4 and verse 2. Verse 2 says, he asks, well, in verse 1, he asks, what causes, what causes, in verse 1, uh, he asks, what causes the quarrels and the fights among you? Then verse 2, he answers the question. He says, you want what you don't have. So you scheme and kill to get it. In other words, you want something that should be given to you, but you have to scheme and kill in order to get it. If you see a person sneezing, one person sneezing, and then here comes somebody else who lives in the same community and they're sneezing. And then here comes somebody else and they live in the same community and they're sneezing. And everybody in the community is sneezing. Then you know that there's a great chance that there may be allergens in the air. And the sneezing is the symptom, but it's not the cause. The cause are the allergens, the allergens that are in the air. And if you see violence in every black community in America, homicides, Baltimore, Chicago, Louisville, then the violence of, is the symptom. But here are the allergens. Some of the allergens that causes the violence is unemployment. Uh, some of the allergens that causes it is social isolation being in segregated communities where you don't have social capital, where you can call somebody and say, give me a hand, give me an opportunity. Uh, could you connect me with this person who has this job? You don't have that in distressed neighborhoods. Some of the allergens are the violence of limited ladders. A ladder is what you do to climb up. There are not many ladders in these communities in which there is high crime, high homicide. The violence of abandonment. Abandonment. First you had in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the 80s white flight. Then starting with the 70s you had black middle class flight. So black people, poor black people are left in poor neighborhoods without leaders and advocates. They've been abandoned. And then finally the violence of economic disinvestment. There's not been much economic disinvestment and gentrification is not investment in people and in black communities. Suppose um, your church went to Disney World. They took the kids to Disney World. And all the kids are having a good time, but it's time to go. They went there, it was 9 o'clock in the morning, now it's 6 in the evening, and it's time to get on the, on the buses and go back to the hotel. Well, there's one kid that you can't find. You keep looking, you keep looking, you can't find the kid anywhere. The kid knew to be back at the bus at a certain time, but you can't find a kid anywhere. So this is what you do. You get on the bus without the kids, and you go back to the hotel. And then the mother asks you, as the youth leader, where's the kid, my child, where's my child? And you say to the mother, the child was lost. So we went on. You think that mother would, 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 take, would take and receive that explanation? No. The mother would say, no, my child was not lost. My child was left. And many urban communities, we go down with our tracks and with our prayer meetings. Let's pray on every corner. We have once the governor of our state in Kentucky said, what we're going to do to fix the violence in the black communities, we're going to have prayer vigils on every corner as though the, the people in that community are lost. The problem with the people in the community is not that they're lost. The violence is not because the black people in the community are lost. The cause of the violence in the black community is because the black people in this community have been left. They've been left behind without opportunity, and they and desperate people do desperate things. The sneezing, the violence, is the symptom. But the root cause, all the allergens, is Isolation, abandonment, being forgotten, being left behind is what's called social justice. And this is what the church must be about if we're going to cure the crisis of urban violence. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for instruction. Thank you for something to think about. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will heal our land our communities, and may we be agents of healing in Jesus' name.
Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, we'd like to extend an invitation for you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. You can become a digital disciple. You can get connected to St. Stephen online. So contact us, email us, newstart at sstlive.org. Later tonight, we will have Bible study, and, and uh, I'd love for you to join us. The pre-worship experience begins at 6.30 with Miss Crystal uh, Goodner Spratt. She's magnificent. So you join us at 6.30, and then at 7 o'clock p.m., we'll gather for worship and Bible study. We're going to have a great time, so join us, all right? You have a blessed day the rest of the day, and until we meet tomorrow, don't forget that during COVID-19, our call is to stay safe and to stay sane and never forget that God is in control. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow.